Horror Fanatic here, and once again, let's talk about books. Or book. This one, Joyland by Stephen King, my favorite author, which if anyone watches this show, it's pretty apparent. This was a step away from what I normally read from him. Uh, Joyland kind of markets itself as a, like, murder mystery with, like, a ghost in there. And while very much those things are in this book, they're not the main focus of it. Um, this book is much more about first love and getting over it and, like, being young and naive. But more looking back at that time through the eyes of an older version of himself. So, I really liked that. And there were some points in this book that made about your first love and how it leaves the deepest scar. And a lot of that really did resonate heavily with me. That's not to say that this isn't a horror story, because as I define horror, it's anything that uses both the dread and revulsion, which this book does, and ends in a way that um, inspires mostly negative emotions, which again, this book does. It left me in a very somber place, and you know what? That's okay. I also found this book to be a very easy read. Um, it took me all of like four days to actually get through it. I liked um, the lingo of the book. And a lot of it's um, whimsical, like carny talk, that I really love. Um, like nicknames for all the rides and things like that. And I really liked all of those aspects of this book, even if they were heavily embellished for it. Um, and it's a book I really do see myself coming back to. I found the main character like likable and very relatable. And once again, Stephen King does some of my favorite things. He references heavy bouts of music in the book, which I love. I love any time that um, a character describes what they listen to, because that, that gives me a better feel and understanding of the character, which this character just happens to like all of the music I like. And it's a book, like I said, I'll come, I plan on coming back to and reading again, and it's, it's, it's definitely worth more than one read, and I'm really glad that he stepped out of the typical, like, stories. Like, it's still there, like... A lot of the Stephen King stuff, the build-up, and then the, the, the peter-out finish. But I also like... I, I like how he does it. The reading this is, almost gives you like the sense of reading a memoir. It's a person talking about a very brief window in their life. And I love that fake memoir feel of it. It gives it much more of a sense of reality and being grounded. The mystery aspects of this book are a little weak because you're never really given any clues to who it is. There's just, the character never figured it out till late in the story. We as, we as readers never have a click for us either, because we never see clues that the character might have missed. And I really dislike that, because it just kind of feels like you could throw any person in the whole book into being the villain in the last ten pages, and it works. Um, because there's no, there's, I like, there's no foreshadowing that it's the killer, because I'm not going to spoil who it is, as I think this book should be read. I really loved the amusement park setting, and I really loved all of the cast of all of the supplementary characters. Like, I can't think of a single character in the book that I don't think was developed in a way that was meaningful. I think all the characters had some kind of minor arc that I really loved. And next month I'll be reading Maplecroft by Sherry Priest. This book comes recommended to me by a friend. Um, she recommended it because I liked Southern Gods and Revival so much, and that had a very Cthulian um, spin to it. And apparently this book does as well, so I'm really looking forward to reading this book. And... I hope you all have a wonderful month, and keep reading!